The MC2100, if you're going to use one of these to power a treadmill motor outside of a treadmill, you need to use a pulse width modulator signal generator to drive this MC2100. The question then becomes, how do you program this? Well, stay tuned because I'm going to show you. Greetings fellow DIYer and welcome to my video. I've done quite a few videos on the MC2100 and in two of them, I talk about programming this little guy right here. One of those videos was when I converted my bandsaw from an SCR voltage controller to a MC2100 and I subsequently burned that MC2100 out. Before I go any further, I wanna be very clear that I am not a fan of this board. It produces beautifully clean power. The motor loves to run on this board. However, these boards are very fragile. I have replaced two of them in my wife's treadmill, which is not seeing excessive use. And I stuck the blade in the bandsaw and blew up the board that I was using to power it. So I stand by what I said when I compared the SCR voltage controller to the MC2100 in one of my previous videos that the SCR voltage controller is more robust and is a better choice if you are using a treadmill motor for things like shop tools. Okay, with the disclaimer aside, let's get into programming. Now, why am I making this video if there's already two videos out there that have this information? Well, it's because one of you, the viewers, sent me a message and said, how do I program this? And what I ended up doing was giving them a link to those two videos. And I thought, you know what? Those two videos, that footage is already been shot. I can take it, throw it in my editing software and edit it down and create one stop shopping for how to program this. So basically what you're getting is snippets from those two videos. I do apologize. They were filmed when I first started my YouTube channel and the quality is not the best. And I'm gonna do my best to edit those up for you and get a nice clean video showing you how to program this. I do make reference to my bandsaw in that footage because one of those videos, as I said before, was when I converted my bandsaw to an MC2100. I have here a couple of different pulse width generators. Both of these signal generators are available for roughly the same price from both Amazon and Walmart.com. I'm going to put links in the description for both signal generators from both websites. And the reason that I'm doing that is some of you may prefer Amazon over Walmart or the other way around. And I just want to make both options available to you. This one up here is totally push button. This one down here has this nice knob. And basically you can power them up, use the settings on them to adjust speed. And what's nice about both of them is they have an on off switch which is gonna be really important when it comes to dealing with that soft start that we all know and love. So hooking up an MC2100 is simple. You wire your pulse width modulator to these control terminals right here. This is the wiring harness that came with this board when I disassembled the treadmill. This is where it connects to the board and I just simply removed the other wires. So the end one is the black one, then the red one, then I removed one, then we have the blue one, then I removed one, two, three, and then the black and white one goes on the very end. And this plugs directly into the board. The blue wire is pulse width. The black and white wire goes into the negative pulse width right here. The red wire goes into V positive and the all black wire goes into V negative. So over here, I have an MC2100 board hooked up. I've got my motor right here, and then I've got the pulse width modulator. Let's see how it works. I power it up, I turn the knob, and nothing happens. This is just as the pulse width modulator came when I purchased it. You can see we have a little red light on on the MC controller, but the motor is not spinning. And the reason for that is because this is not set to the correct setting. Right now, it is set at 100 hertz, and we need it at 20 hertz. So to set this, what we end up doing is we press this button twice, and we turn it down. 
right there at 0 to 0 provides us with 20 hertz. All right, so I've got it set at 20 hertz. I power everything on, nothing happens. That's that soft start that we were talking about. If I turn this unit off and then back on, we bypass the soft start. And as you can see right here, the motor is starting to turn. To vary speed, we just adjust the knob, and we can get quite a bit of speed. At any point, we can turn it off, and it will wind down, take a little bit. There's a fairly large flywheel on the motor that I'm using for this demonstration. We want to turn it back on. We turn it on, and it should come on here in just a second, and there you go. Now, as I said before, we have soft start. So, if I turn the power off, the master power, Take a minute for these capacitors to discharge. Everything will turn off. We'll wait for this motor to wind down. Then we turn the power back on. Nothing happens. Again, this is the soft start feature. You could turn the knob all the way to the slowest setting and then back up and you could get it where you want it. But here, I just turn it off and turn it on again. I bypass the soft start and we go back up to the last setting that it was set on. And an important thing that we set is minimum and maximum. Because this bandsaw is being driven by a motor that even with the gearing can go twice as fast as what the bandsaw was designed to go, I need to set a max. I also found that anything less than 17% it didn't come on at any slower speed. I could turn it down, but the speed stayed the same. So we're gonna set the minimum at 17 and we're gonna set the max at 42. Now I've actually already done this. If I turn this on, minimum is 17, max is 42. But how did I make that setting? It's really pretty simple. Not only does this serve as a turn switch, it's also a push button. So if we hold it down, we get down, so we can now adjust. Let's say I wanted the minimum to be 30. We can set the minimum at 30. Or, like I need for this application, 17. Push it again, now we get the upper maximum. And I can set that at 75 or 95 or wherever I want it. In this case, we don't want to go more than 42% because that's the max RPM that this bandsaw was originally set up to handle. When we hold the button down, it sets. So you can see we are at 20 hertz, 41% there, 42 is the max, 17 is the minimum. Now, when I was researching how to program this, I did learn one thing that was kind of cool. If we hold it down, we get the max and min, we keep holding it, that's the lockout. That locks it so that it stays at those settings all the time. Keep holding it down. Now, did you see that point appear there? We are now at 20 hertz, and we have 1,000 spaces of adjustment. So as I turn this, it's only going to go one-tenth of a percentage. Now, in the case of this particular unit, that's, that's awesome because I'm only going between 17 and 42. And so multiplying that by a factor of 10, we've only got several hundred possible settings. If we were going from 0 to 100, we'd have 1,000, and that would be an awful lot. And my biggest complaint with the MC2100 when I was testing was that you could not dial the speed in. But now with a thousand options instead of a hundred options, you can get it a whole lot closer. And I'm gonna chalk that up to operator error. That's a function that I did not know that it had. Let's turn it on. And now I can adjust one-tenth of a percent at a time. And that's really gonna allow me to dial this in. If I want to go back, let's say I only want it to go 17 to 42, one percentage at a time. Again, we just hold it down. Minimum comes up, lockout comes up, and now we're back to the normal setting, the 20 hertz that we set, and we're now at one percentage point per turn. This is the other pulse width modulator that I purchased. 
it uses the same four wires, but it puts them in a different configuration. You can see right there, actually we'll do it that way. You can see right there that it's got the V negative, the V positive, the ground and the pulse width. This is ground, pulse width, V negative, V positive. So you wire it the same, but the order is different. When we flip it over, this is the unit right here. It doesn't have a dial, but it does have uh, buttons to adjust everything. Now when this came, it was 1.5 kilohertz. So 1.5 thousand hertz. And we've got to get it set for 20 hertz. So we take it down right there. 0 0.020 is 20 hertz. And you just heard the motor kick on because that's the pulse width that we need. Now, to change the duty cycle, you press up here or down, and you can adjust speed accordingly. And like the other one, it has the advantage of an on-off switch. And this on-off switch can be used the exact same way as before. Well, I hope that helps. I hope you now understand how this works, how the other one works, and how to program them. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to post a comment down below. Because as I said at the beginning, it was a comment that made me put this video together. And if you make a comment and it inspires a video, that could be the next video on Days Cars. If you like what you've seen, please click like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.